Welcome to this week's episode of the Prep Athletics Podcast. On this week's episode, we have Holman Smith joining us. Holman was a kid that I worked with out in Northern Virginia who was a thousand point scorer at George Mason High School. I helped him find the Tilton School and he did a postgrad year there playing New England in the AA, uh, NEPSAC AA Conference. Had a great experience there, he got a lot of minutes in, played with good players, played against good competition, and then he ended up doing um, a walking on at James Madison. So he's, this is his fourth year there. Uh, we talk about you know the benefits of prep school year, what he liked a lot, what he didn't. We talk about being a walk-on, what's great, what's challenging. We talk about playing in a D1 program. We give tips on what kids should know before they go to prep school, before they go to D1. Uh, we talk about James Madison's big upset of number five Michigan State on the road, which vaulted them into the top 25 this year. And, um, yeah, I think he shares some great advice, and it's our first – player we've had in the podcast uh, to get their perspective of going to prep school, playing D1, and being a walk-on. So pretty good conversation with Holman Smith. So thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the podcast. Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Holman, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, man. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good to see you too. Um, you know, you were a thousand point scorer at George Mason High School in Northern Virginia, and then you ended up doing a post grad year after that, and that's how we met. Where did you get the idea for doing a post grad year, and, and why did you want to do one, Holman? Um, for me, it was towards the end of my senior year, and I was talking to some coaches um, about being a walk on or playing Division three. Um, and I was at spring break, actually, uh, on a trip with my family. I kind of remember sitting there and being like, I for sure want to play in college, but the options I had weren't fantastic at the time. And I had a friend who's going to uh, Bridgeton Academy. I kind of texted him like, hey, man, how'd you uh, first of all find this school? And I had some questions for him. And I kind of knew just I wanted to ask more questions about playing prep school and how it would help me. And I kind of was committed to playing basketball in college. So um, that's kind of how I decided. And then from there, yeah, just I heard all the benefits that prep school could do for you. And it sounded like the right path for me to take. Gotcha. And you ended up choosing Tilton School. Why did you choose Tilton? I chose Tilton because, uh, to be honest, mostly because of Coach O'Neill. Um, I toured a few other schools in the area, but I felt like with Marcus – um, his experience and what he wanted out of me. He um, said he'd done it before with players my size, my skill level, things like that. Um, and basically, he pretty much promised me that he would do everything he could to help me after the fact. And so he didn't promise me playing time or anything like that, but he promised me exposure. If I worked hard, I'd be able to kind of reach my goals, and that was the biggest factor for me. Gotcha. And what was the best part about playing prep school basketball? I think the competition was the biggest part. Um, like you said, I played basketball in Virginia at a small public school in high school. You might have like three or four games a year where you're playing somebody good who's going Division One, and you kind of get up for those games. Whereas in prep school and NEPSAC, you're playing like 35 games a season, and 25 of them are against high-level competition, guys that are all scholarship players at Division One level. Um, so kind of just the night in, night out, playing against good comp was the best part of prep school. Yeah, and what was the worst part about it? Um, the worst part was being somewhere as a postgraduate where you have Saturday school and your friends are all in college for the first time and they have all this freedom and you kind of feel like um, you're kind of stuck right there. And it's hard in the fall, um, that first Saturday or that first weekend when you're um, somewhere and it's kind of like isolated and excluded, but um Looking back on it, like I wouldn't train, uh, change it for anything. And you get so close to your teammates, classmates, coaches, professors, and it helped me a lot. So no regrets, but that first uh, month or two is kind of tough sometimes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And did you get homesick while you were there? I was definitely homesick. I thought I'd be fine, but um, after the first month, you know, you kind of get – it's kind of far from home and you start missing your pets and your friends and your family. So, yeah. 
what helped you get through that homesickness? Uh, my teammates, to be honest, mostly. So uh, you can call home, talk to your parents, your friends, but people that are actually at the school with you are the people that you're going to uh, be trying to like lean on for support because they're going through the same thing. Um, and so at first it could be hard if you're not close to them, but if you put the time uh, in to get to know them, to ask them questions about their families and their backgrounds, and then just going to the gym with them, going to get food together, that kind of thing helped me a lot. What surprised you the most about going to prep school? Um, surprised me the most. Just to be honest, at Tilton, it was the different people um, who were at the school. So it's not one of those just basketball factories um, that are only there for athletes. So I met a lot of people from different countries who were there just to get the academic experience. And so I was surprised how much fun I had with um, my classmates who were not athletes or were not there for basketball. So that was the biggest surprise. All right. And how you're now playing D1 at James Madison. How did Goodwin doing a post-grad year in the NEPSEC at Tilton, how did it prepare you for Division One basketball? I think the practice culture, the um, my teammates who are all very talented and all had the same goals as me in terms of playing at the next level prepared me because, um, like I said, in high school, you don't really get that. Um, and then at prep school, it's like everyone has the same goal. You're doing, you're playing um, one-on-one -on -one drills and practice against guys who are competing for playing time, but also want to see you succeed. And so that was the biggest thing that helped me get ready for Division One. Gotcha. And what advice would you give kids looking at a post-grad year? I would say um, find the best fit for you. Don't just go somewhere because of the nickname or the recognition that a certain school might have. Um, talk to the coaches. Make sure they uh, have your best interests in mind. Um, make sure you ask them what they're going to do to help you and what they also want out of you to do um, while you're there for that year. So expectations, um, ask them about their track record with similar people, similar athletes they've had before, because um, that's what got me to go to Tilton. And that's what I think people kind of miss out on when they just go somewhere because I have playing time or they might have a cool jersey to wear. That's not the most important thing at all. And so, just make sure the coaches and the school is right for you. Yeah. And Holman, that's what I said to everybody. That's what I said to you. That's what I said to your brother. Mm -hmm. You got to pick the coach, right? You're going to get all the benefits you mentioned. You're going to get homesick. You're going to play good competition. That's going to happen at every prep school you go to, but the big part's going to be basketball, as you mentioned. And to me, the coach is just the most important part of that whole process. For sure. And that's true with prep school and colleges too. Even like you see it nowadays, players commit to a coach, not even the school. And so that starts in high school and prep school because that's who you're going to be trusting with your basically whole year. They have everything. They can, the playing time is one thing, but just I think the more important thing is just trying to watch you improve over the span of the year. So starting with the fall workouts into the spring open gym sessions, just if the coach is there every single day looking out for you, you'll be okay. Yeah, perfect. Now you chose James Madison. Why did you choose James Madison for your college option? I chose James Madison um, because it was a brand new coaching staff here and it was kind of a fresh uh, start for the program. I've heard good things about the school being from Virginia, obviously. Um, I had a lot of friends that went here just as regular students, non-athletic. Um, but the combination of the things I'd heard from my friends who were just regular students and the things the coaching staff was telling me about what their uh, vision was for their program and how I could come in and be on the team and just compete and practice all the time with all these high level guys. It definitely sold me and I had um, kind of just took it right away and um, decided it all worked out here. I love it here. It's been great. So, yeah. Perfect. And what about being a walk on? What's that experience like versus being potentially a scholarship player? Yeah, being a walk-on um, and also kind of is the coach, coaching staff matters a lot for that decision as well because I have a lot of friends who know walk-ons or, or are walk-ons and each staff at the Division One uh, level kind of treats walk-ons in a different way and sees them as a different part of the team. So I would say for me, it's been great because I knew right away what, what my job was. I didn't expect anything. I knew I wasn't going to play right away, obviously. I knew my job was to push the guys in practice, to have 
no ego, um, to do what's best for the team, get good grades. Um, and I think the expectations of the coaching staff told me right away my first Zoom call or phone call kind of helped me get my, get my mind right. And it was hard at first because you're used to, even at Tilton, I was playing a lot in the games and everything. And so coming here for the first time not playing during the games was tough. But you get so much time in practice where you're pretty much playing at a higher level than you've played at prep school and high school before. Um, and you have to understand that the games are only 30 a year out of a whole year, and you have practice every single day where you're going for two hours against um, future pros. And so that's the coolest thing. And once you kind of buy into that, it makes it a lot easier. So what's the best part about being a walk-on? I would say the best part is, for me, having to play on scout team in practice and having to know the other team's personnel and their plays. Cause I have to know obviously all of our team's plays in case you get thrown in the game or playing the first team or second team part of practice, but also having to prepare for that pregame um, scout. It's been really cool. And I feel like I've learned so much um, about different uh, coaches, philosophies, different teams. And I almost like know other teams plays more than my own play sometimes because you have to, kind of help the guys, help the starters um, get ready for the big games. And so competing um, and also just learning new offenses, defenses, schemes, and all that, that's been the coolest part for me in terms of um, something unique that you don't get to have as a scholarship player or as a regular student. Yeah, cool. What about what's the most challenging part of being a walk-on? The most challenging part about being a walk-on is – I think just not playing um, in the games as much and knowing that that's not your job. Like you can play the end of the game and that's the, the fun part. I love doing that, getting in um, when the crowd's you know, chanting your name at the end and it's fun, but that's the, probably five, six times out of a whole year. And so the hardest part is those other games where you're, you know, going hard in practice, going hard in the weight room, just knowing you're probably not going to go to the court this next game, but understanding that, um, and kind of taking it as a challenge, like a personal challenge. Um, it's hard, but also it's the kind of the worst and the best part for me is just putting your ego to the side because it's going to be a lot, uh, something that can help you after you graduate in the workplace. If you want to play pro, just um, being part of a team and doing your role is the best, is the worst and best part. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Well, James Madison this year made the top 25. And how did things change around the program when that happened? Um, to be honest, in the program, nothing changed at all. I don't even think my head coach mentioned it the next day in the team meeting. Um, so it's kind of crazy. Everyone's talking about it on social media or texting you and calling you. And then you could come to practice, come to the film session and everyone's kind of ignoring it. No one even acknowledges. It's kind of just like back to work, um, for the next game. So in the program, not much change. We kind of have an expectation of just coming in, um, helping the team, doing your job. And then, but from the outside, it was definitely a big change. You got a lot more you know, texts, their calls after that happened, congratulations, things like that. But again, like um, our coaching staff and our, my teammates have done a good job of kind of putting the outside noise away and focusing on the job because we still have a long way to go this year. Gotcha. What's something about D1 basketball, Holman, that kids don't know about that you think they should know before they make that jump? I would say just there's a lot of, politics uh, in D1 basketball. That's with um, AAU teams, coaching staffs, players, families. Um, you have 13 guys on scholarship at a Division One program, and all of them have aspirations of playing in the NBA or if not pro. And they have agents talking to them, uh, parents talking to them about how much they have to score. And so I would say if you look at the good teams in Division One, those teams kind of put that outside noise to rest and do what's best for the team. I think you'd be surprised about just how much pressure there is on these kids at the division one level to go out and produce because they have a whole program or family kind of counting on them and they're all so talented, but that's been a surprise for me to seeing how much like high level stress there is on the players and the coaches and how hard it is kind of to navigate that sometimes. Gotcha. Now your brother, Jamison, your younger brother, he did a post-grad year himself in New England, and now he's a mm -hmm. freshman walk-on at Rhode Island in the yes, A-10. And, uh, yeah, what advice did you give him both before prep school and then, like, when choosing colleges and then ultimately being a walk-on? Like, you've done all three of those yeah. things. What yeah. kind of conversations did you have? Um, 
um, for me, I knew that he'd be okay. He'd be a good, first of all, prep school player and the walk-on because of how hard he works. But I was telling him, he sees me, he saw me go through it and saw me get kind of some of the like clout or the benefits of playing Division One. And I was telling him, just don't uh, take this route because of the, that kind of stuff. Don't take it because you can post a Instagram picture or uh, girls might like you. Don't do it for that. It, it has to for sure be bought in fully to working hard every single every single time on the court, being the hardest worker, first one in, last one out, because um, one, going to private school at a good school like you went to, and then two, being a walk-on. Like, um, don't do it for something that you want to show off, do it because you actually love playing basketball and love competing and love trying to improve your game because that's the only way you're going to be happy doing this, um, taking this route. Love it. Love it. All right, Homer, we're going to finish up here with some quick hitters, okay? All right, sounds good. What's the best win of your career, both either in college and in prep school slash high school? Best win of my career was this past year at Michigan State when they were top five in the country in college. What was that like in the locker room afterwards? It was crazy. It was the first game of the year, and so it's kind of like you have no expectations about how good your team is, how good their team is. But the locker room, some of the starters that played a lot that game seemed more calm than some of the coaches even. That They're kind of like, we expected to do this. So our team kind of has almost irrational confidence sometimes. But in that case, in that scenario, it played out well. And our team, yeah, it was amazing night, amazing um, yeah, celebration for sure. Awesome. Who's the best player you ever played against at prep school? Um, best player was... Kadari Richmond at uh, Brewster Academy. I had to match up with him um, both times and had to guard him, and it was it was tough. Uh, he just has so much shake to him. I think he's at Seton Hall now. I know he went to Syracuse first, but yeah, I'd never guard somebody that strong and quick, so it was tough. <laughs> All right, what about uh, you know? I know you haven't gotten any minutes uh, as a walk on, but like as your time at James Madison, like who's the best player you've seen play against you guys or had the best performance? play against us that's tough there's a lot um i would no say it could i mean even though it beat michigan state it could be uh, their point guard uh tyson walker this year he was kind of the one guy that actually played well against us and i played him when he was at northeastern as well so to kind of get to see him and his growth over time um i know he went to i think new hampton actually before i did was in prep school too but yeah uh he's the best player i've seen recently um against us What's your favorite movie of all time? Coach Carter. Oh, right. That's right. Basketball movie. Oh, wait, no, Coach that. Carter. Yeah, yeah, Coach I Carter. I remember it's, the Titans. It's, it's, yeah, no, nah, that one's good too, but Coach Carter, I think it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, nice. And lastly, what's your hobbies when you're not studying or doing basketball? My hobbies include um, hiking, spending time with family and friends, but yeah, like being outside, being in the mountains, which is – um, good because at JMU, you have a lot of that around you. So it's been, yeah, being outside is the biggest there, hobby I have outside of basketball. Perfect. Is there anything you want to discuss that we didn't touch on today? Not particularly, but um, I just want to say again for anybody looking at prep schools who's listening to the podcast or looking at colleges, again, just everyone feels pressure. Everyone goes through it. Um, take your time. Don't feel pressured by, you know, friends or people that are trying to do what's best think they know what's best for you because at the end of the day, it's your decision. And so don't feel like you have to go a certain route. You can always change your mind if something's not feeling right. So do what's best in your heart, trust the people that are um, close to you, but at the same time, you know, take those, ask those questions to those coaches, to those, you know, consultants like yourself, um, that kind of thing. And yeah, just, it's definitely stressful, but at the end of the day, uh, if you want to play basketball and love doing it, there's somewhere for you to play. And so just find the best fit for you. Perfect. And where can people find you on social media? Um, Instagram is where I'm most active uh, at underscore at underscore Holman underscore. Um, that's where I'm definitely most active. And so if you want to come ask any questions or reach out, that's where I'll be. Perfect. And we'll put that in the show notes. If people want to follow you, I suggest you do to keep up with Holman, what he's got going on. 
Holman, thanks so much for joining the podcast today. It's been a pleasure watching you develop since senior high school through Tilton and, and what you're doing now. And when I saw that big win you guys had against Michigan State, you were the first one I thought of. So uh, excited just watching your progress and, and just, uh, you know, want to keep following it throughout your career and your life. So very proud of you, young man. All right. Thank you so much, Corey. You've you know, helped a lot and I appreciate it. It's so good talking to you. Yeah, good talking to you again, too. So if you guys enjoyed this podcast, just uh, make sure to subscribe on all the major podcasting platforms. Go to YouTube. We got good stuff there. And then prepathletics.com. Sign up for our newsletter to make sure you don't miss any updates. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week on the Prep Athletics Podcast. Take care. Take care.